Welcome back everyone. I've just had a lovely slice of red velvet cake and a coffee at Bike Stop. I don't know if you can see that down here. 1500 miles. I've had the bike probably three months now I think it is. Obviously I did my pre-run-in service uh, review which was the month. And I thought I'd do a bit of an update just to let you know how I'm getting on, if I'm still liking the bike, what annoys me and what I've sort of got over, if that makes sense. I'm going to try not to repeat a lot of the stuff that was in my one month ownership review. So if you haven't seen it already, I'll put it in this top corner here, or this top corner, I can't remember which one it is. So stick around if you're interested in that. First of all, the sort of main thing, am I still liking the bike? Yes, absolutely love this thing. There are a few little niggles which are not bugging me, but you just sort of little things you just got to get used to. In a few weeks time, I'm taking it on a trip. It's only like a long weekend kind of jobby. I'm going with the, the old man again, my dad, um, who came with me on the Creef Cloverleaf tour, which you'll, if you haven't seen, I'll stick a card in the top corner. That will give me a bit of a test of how it's going to do on a long journey. So a couple of things I didn't, uh, didn't get around to testing in my last month ownership review was the wet weather performance, headlights or general lighting of the bike off-road and like a long journey test so i'm going to compartmentalize this add little bits so i might look slightly different i might be in different gear being a ktm the first thing that most people have got on the back of their head is has it been reliable so far touch wood i haven't had a single issue with this for myself there has been one recall which i got done on the first service that was i don't know exactly what it was but there's a, pr a plastic reservoir or something like that in the back of the bike which apparently with aggressive riding when the engine gets really hot that has been known to melt so what they did is they just replaced that with a, a aluminium one or a titanium one obviously all completely free everything else has been completely faultless being keyless i've had nothing wrong with the fuel cap or turning the bike on there was one time when i thought the bike wasn't turning on but basically what it was i'd had the steering lock on you know on a keyed bike you have to kind of have it loose or like in between the locking points and then it will unlock same thing with this the quick shifter has been faultless the blipper sometimes misses a downshift but i don't know whether that's just because i'm either i'm still on the throttle but i'm not really noticing or um i'm not pressing hard enough down i know it's not the bike's fault but i don't really have a huge amount of confidence in these tires in the wet i don't know whether it's the fact that it's a very powerful bike as to why it slips out a bit more and stuff but they're definitely not as grippy as i'd want them to be in the wet this charging port here uh, i don't know if you can see there i've just got a uh, charging lead in there i had to buy a specific like angled um lead for it because it was a bit it was fine but it was like i couldn't get a proper like a normal lead in there so i had to get like it's i'll put in a picture here somewhere but that's fantastic it's fast charges my phone this is rally mode if you're not aware so this whole screen here is rally mode and i've got it set to dark mode all the time just because i think it looks cooler in this rally mode on the left here you've got your tra uh, trash control that you can dial up and down i've got the suspension setting automatic mode which i actually find really good so essentially what the automatic mode does is it changes based on what you're doing so if you're riding like a bit of a dick or like you're a bit aggressive on the throttle and whatever it's stiffen up if you're oh there you go see what i mean downshift didn't quite go into gear but i don't know why it does that just every now and again it does that caravan caravan so if you're on a motorway not really doing a lot with the throttle it just slowly go back into the comfort setting in rally throttle mode the throttle's just a bit too eager like it sort of wants to go all the time you can't really ride it around sensibly sport mode it's down low but it's not as extreme so i just leave it sport mode the self-cancelling indicators they're fine sometimes they work sometimes i get brooker or george behind me just going sam you left your indicator on again i'm just gonna nip past this caravan oh my god this thing's so quick don't know whether the tires are gonna grip oh my god Oh, the camera's faced back. That anti-dive is so good. 
Oh, these brakes are awesome. Uh, saying this and I've just literally just told you that I don't have any confidence in these tyres. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, not quite where I wanted it to be. <laughs> Knowing this is a 250 mile tank range and it's a relatively comfortable bike and it's got all the technology on it and then you can just do that oh my god it's so quick to be fair to the quick shifter i'm in brand new boots so i've got these city adventure twos and they're brand new and they're really stiff uh, when you're going for it you do get a little bit of the old sort of rowing handlebars it, all it is is because the front wheel's really light so if you bump the preload up so you're a little bit more over the front of the bike it tends to be okay there's a chap called Ricardo Yeep that's got one of these. He had that originally, and what he did is he just found out that his wheels weren't quite perfectly balanced. So he took them off, rebalanced them, and now doesn't have a problem at all. So while we're talking about suspension and everything, the anti-dive function is just, oh, it's so good. It's just, I wonder if I can show you the difference actually. Anti-dive off. Right, so I will do a full video on this, but if I pull the brakes on now, Oh, see how much it dives. Now if I put it on, go back up the same speed. There's a bit, like you still get a bit of dive, but so much more improved. Because the engine is that good, and because you've obviously got 160 horsepower, it's very easy to speed. In the UK, they say if you get done for speeding or caught speeding, you've got to wait 14 days to see if anything comes through the post. Now that's not if you get pulled over, that's just the automatic speed cameras and the guns. The day I got this unrestricted, I, I just had the first service. I rode it all day long and I was riding like a dick. Like I, I, I got home and had to have a chat with myself kind of thing. <laughs> and I was convinced I'd been done for speeding. So I had a 14 day wait and luckily nothing came through. Brooker came round to mine in the evening uh, to go for a ride on whatever the week after and he had like no he had very little coolant in his bike so uh, we had to go and get some coolant as I came off the roundabout it was a lane that went down from two lanes on the roundabout down to one and these trucks started pulling over so I just sort of opened it up it was 40 mile an hour limit and I was so say I'm doing 40 now around the roundabout it's just like 52 easily and as I did that got past the truck and then slowed back down to 40 and I just clock this speed camera car or van pointing his gun at me and I was like oh shit <laughs> well I was like a hundred percent sure I got done if you're like me and you haven't got a lot of self-restraint I advise using the cruise control in towns like 30s 40s 50s just use the cruise control thankfully nothing's come through yet so but I think it's, it's probably just gonna be a matter of time isn't it let's be honest wet weather performance i obviously mentioned about the tires previously and i'm not too sure about that the bike itself handles wet weather so well i've already ridden it a handful of times in the in the rain all the electronics the corner and abs corner and traction control the regulatory slip control or whatever you call it it's so good like if the back wheel steps out it just corrects it for you same thing off-road if um if you pin it and the back wheel obviously lights up and uh it goes a little bit too far like the bike just sorts it all out for you neutral never have a problem finding neutral or anything which is lovely so you've got these which are the uh, drls so they're literally just they're really bright drls you can have these switched on or off it's up to you so with it off now the headlight comes on and then your high beam is the lower part so you've got these two here and then what you've got at the front, which I'll try and get in a video, is you've got three lights here, which are the cornering lights. And to be fair, they are so good. You'll see a bit in a minute. So what I'll do is I'll go through the, the lights now and general sort of night riding. So I'll, I'll catch you in a minute. Welcome to the night ride. This is what the dashes look, would look like. Obviously I've got it in dark mode all the time, like I mentioned before. It goes this white on black rather than black on white. It's not glary at all. One thing that does bug me a little bit about the backlit switch gear 
is the power button and the like locking button this like the hazard button should i say and the locking button they're very bright they're very clear very obvious and then you go to the other side and it's quite dull i don't know if you can see that it's just it's still there you can still see it but it's just quite a dull finish it's almost like that's one led that's lighting up those four different buttons i mean it's not not a problem you can still see where it is you know i mean you really have a problem seeing stuff like that anyway now you see the rear light uh, obviously it's only the number plate light that's the rear brake light yeah the rear brake light could be brighter the main light is fantastic you get a lot of throw the high beam is it's like daytime it is so good you might be able to see like a random flash of like additional light that comes in those are the cornering lights so when you the further you lean in the more like the, each light comes on if that makes sense we lean into this corner there's another one there's a third one there you go it is so good although i have to say i've never been flashed or anything by anyone see oh this is quite a dark motorway but there you go look it's so so good at lighting up the curb so that should do me back to daytime version of me i'll see you in a second welcome back to day by the way comfort wise it's fine i've ordered an ergo seat and that's only because of that long trip i did to kent it was like it was fine but i could have been a bit comfier i mentioned before that the bars were a little bit too low for me or a bit too far forward so i bought these sw motec uh, bar risers which means i've just got a bit of a bend in my arm which is so much more comfortable as i said before i've added this puge um clip on screen which is i mean i'm riding with my visor up now you won't be able to see because the other camera's down there there is a bit of vibration but it's not as bad as you think like sixth gear on the motorway you can barely feel anything i still really like the looks of this thing i don't know if you've seen but i'll put a picture in now george has just bought himself a tiger 900 rally pro and it is it's a good looking bike and it makes this look a little bit i don't know i've taken some photos which i think it looks so cool in like i'm just i like yeah it looks awesome emma my girlfriend called it a grasshopper she says it's got a grasshopper's face and i was just like what are you chatting about like i don't like i get it looks a bit insect like but a grasshopper i saw this gif or gif or whatever you want to call it of the grasshopper from uh, a bug's life <laughs> and it looks exactly like this i'll put it i'll put it in the gif somewhere but i was just like oh that's what she means <laughs> <laughs> and once you've seen it you can't unsee it it just makes me laugh but yeah i still think it looks really awesome i've got the crash bars on now so it looks a bit more beefy welcome to the uh long journey section i'm loaded up if i haven't already put a picture in i'll put one in now i've got full camping gear on the back tent seat five days worth of clothing a jet boil and all those kind of things comfort wise i am pushed forward quite a bit but that's because of the setup of everything behind me my rear end is comfortable enough it's gonna benefit massively from my ergo seat that i've got on order from ktm first of all you'll probably see it up here this adaptive cruise it just i mean it's so so good this is really rare in the uk having roadworks not what's really nice about stuff like this is when there's overhead cameras the adaptive cruise just slows you down because everyone in front of you is slowing down so you slow down and then accelerate off again currently i'm doing 61 mpg so that is telling me i've got a fuel range of 240 miles before empty which is fantastic i've already done 40 just shy 45 miles and that will give me a, a range of nearly 300 miles so absolutely fantastic one thing that has really bugged me <laughs> i've got the uh ktm navigation app going as you can as you can probably see in the middle here so you get turn by turn navigation the woman that shouts directions at you oh my god she does not shut up in 500 meters prepare to turn left in 500 meters you will be turning left in 300 meters turn left it's just constant and i was trying to have a conversation with my dad before at the start of this ride and i had to pull over and turn the voice off obviously you can turn the voice off but yeah i had to pull over and turn the voice off because i was getting so infuriated with her just shouting shit in my ear <laughs> 
The only other thing that winds me up is the navigation app's a little bit, I mean, it works, but this entire ride, although I've set the route, I've obviously previously set the, the app to avoid motorways. So on this route, I've put, don't, obviously don't avoid motorways. It's constantly trying to um, take me off the motorway and take me off uh, the A roads. And I'm like, no, I've, I've set it. And I've tried that three times now. I close the app completely and then put in the destination again from scratch. And it's, oh, I mean, it seems to be working. Other than that, I'm comfortable. My legs are in a half decent position. Again, I know I'm being, I'm sort of pushed forward a bit. Obviously, as you'd expect, I've had no issues with power loaded up. If I go into here, you've obviously got all your bike information, which is really useful to see. The other thing that's really nice, which I was gonna mention is, actually, let me just go into my custom menu too. As you can see here, a bit of a shout out to Teapot. My Spotify is linked to my phone, obviously, and then my phone's linked to the bike. But it means you get all your um, all your music on the screen. You obviously don't need it all the time, but it's really nice to have on screen. You can sort of skip through tracks and stuff. This is literally just a tag on part to my uh, previous bit early in the ride. I did think I'm talking to you about how the bike is on a long journey and uh, I'd only been riding like an hour. <laughs> So I am 136, 137 miles into the journey. I've got 140 left in the tank. So you're still looking at what, 270, 280 mile tank. I'm averaging 59 mpg. That was a bit higher, it was around 60, 61. But I haven't been sitting at the speed limit. Whether you take that as above or below, that is up to you, but it's definitely one of them. The bike's been absolutely fine, to be fair. It's comfy, it's been faultless. My derriere has had been a bit, yeah, I mean, it was starting to ache a bit. I'm more than comfortable in the riding position. Uh, I've got no aches and pains at all, like in my back or my neck or anything. Wind protection with this additional uh, fuse screen that I mentioned. Uh, I'm getting a bit of side blast, but I think that's because it's quite a windy evening. But other than that, I've had my visor open for most of the journey. It's getting quite chilly at the moment, um, but these heat grips, I've got the heat grips on medium, and they are so warm. I wouldn't mind my heated seat, but that's, I think I'm, I'm not actually wearing any thermals or anything underneath my bike gear I'm wearing. Well, I've got boxes on underneath the trousers. <laughs> And um, I've got uh, just a t-shirt on underneath my top, so I'm not exactly wrapped up warm. There we go, we're on the Prince of Wales Bridge. That's probably why it's quite windy. For a 1300cc, 160 horsepower ASBO bike, um, I think around 60 mpg is phenomenal, to be frank. Yeah, anyway, day me. What I'll do now is I'll... Um, I'll take you through a bit of a, an off-roading section. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this bike is obviously the S version, and it's on road tyres, so these are the Metas Terraforce R's, I think they are. I mean, they look a little bit... Look at me, I'm trying to be off-road, but they're really not. Um, they are very much on-road tyres. You can see here, I'm in off-road ABS mode, which basically turns the back wheels ABS off, so you can do mad skids, bro. I'm in off-road suspension mode and I'm in off-road throttle mode. Let me just quickly dive into the throttle adjuster modes. So this is off-road so you can see that there's no real power down the bottom and it's all up top. Rally mode is all the power down the bottom and not very much up top. Street is basically linear and then you've got sport which is quite a lot of power down the bottom but not really a lot up top. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it into uh, rally mode. As I said before this is the slip adjuster so you can essentially just dial up and down how far you want the rear end to sort of willingly slip out as it were before it saves you. Green lanes and byways in the UK and probably everywhere are used by uh, dog walkers, they're used by uh, horses like br as in bridleways as you can see there's horse poo poo everywhere and they're used by cyclists as well. If you're going to ride like a dick save it for another place that is obviously not as closed off as this is. Now I've got that out of the way, uh, I am a keen off-roader I'd say, I did a, like a lot of people, I did a lot of motocross when I was younger, so I'm not a complete novice, but by no means am I sort of Simon Pavey or Lel Pavey. As you can probably tell, like the, it is just soaking up all the bumps. I mean, I know this isn't hardcore stuff and it's literally just a dirt track basically. There's a lot of 
undulations and bumps and everything that you probably won't be able to see on the camera. Comparing it to my Tracer, this, I have so much more confidence in this. The Tracer used to bottom out everywhere and it just felt like I was riding something that didn't want to be ridden off-road. <laughs> oh. but again look look at this it's just there's so many stones and everything in the surface and the bike just soaks it all up i know i'm barely scratching the surface of what this bike can do the one thing that's not as great which you can solve in the aftermarket section is these foot pegs although they're good for the road and they're comfortable enough and take absorb all the vibrations they're not the best for if you get muddy feet I can't wait to get some knobbly tyres on this thing. It's going to be so much better. <laughs> this thing is... <laughs> I mean, you really don't need 160 horsepower off-road. I think the off-road mode ducks it down to like 100. But once you've got 160 horsepower, you kind of want it. <laughs> Obviously, I've got the traction control down at one at the moment, the slip control. But if you dial that up a bit, if you're not as confident off-road, and you dial it up to like four or five, when the back steps out, it just stops itself. And it is so good. It gives you such a level of confidence. Essentially, it's really good. The suspension soaks up so much, or the stuff I do anyway. If you do have a point where the wheels leave the floor, when you land it just cushions there's no bottoming out the traction control if you've got it on is not too intrusive at all when you want it to be intrusive i.e like you want it to save you from a slip it saves you just at the right time but yeah anyway i'm gonna take some photos of it and uh i will see you back in the daytime mode tft wise as i said before it's really clear it's so easy to use like it doesn't have uh android auto or apple carplay which I think would take this to a next level. When you watch Richie Vida on his Africa Twin and he's just got the Google Maps on screen, you've got the full navigation. It's just so good. Um, and then being able to actually access your Spotify playlist and stuff would be really nice. I think like, compared to last year's model anyway, I think the cockpit as such is such a better place to be. Like the TFT is bigger, so it dominates more of the top cockpit. The switch gear is so much nicer and just general sort of look of everything looks quite nice it's not quite as a uh, luxury feeling as a gs it doesn't feel cheap or tacky it just it feels quite nice it just doesn't have that gs finesse kind of thing one thing that does get me <laughs> is uh it turns over one more time than i think it should and i'm i'm gonna blame it on the fact that it's such a beefy engine but <laughs> Every time I start it, I just sit there going, oh, is it going to start? I'll show you what I mean in a second. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like a... Do -do 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 -do, and then it starts. As long as it stays reliable. <laughs> Bloody Nora. I do think I'm going to keep this thing for a long time or like at least four or five years stick 50 60 000 miles on it this video is probably far too long already if you've got to this point like kudos hoping between this and my month one month ownership review it's giving you guys a bit of an understanding of how my uh, ownership experience has been any questions stick them in the comment section below Jesus. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll uh I'll see you in the next one.